So today I thought we'd take a look at Optic's Icebox because it was a very good Icebox from Optic in their game against Sentinels. Um, and in particular, having watched the game, I wanted to focus on KO. Now, KO is an agent, if you know, if you've been watching this channel, that I really think is very, very strong indeed. And we're starting to see more and more KO played across the different maps, and Icebox is no exception. And so, even though Victor didn't really go crazy fragging out or anything like that, uh, he did have a very big impact on this game uh, with some of his utility usage, and so I thought I would just bring to light some of the things that Victor did on Icebox with KO. So the first thing we're going to point out is in the pistol round, and one thing that KO is really good at is exactly what Victor does here. You can see they're on attack here, they're grouping up towards B, and it's this knife. So he jumps, does a knife, and it lands here, and that gets all of this. And that basically tells you, because it gets no one, it basically tells them no one is playing close. And this is something that you will often see on Icebox, that defenders will like to get into, you know, their little corners, they like to get into little aggressive angles on both sides. And sometimes, you know, a Sova dart can't necessarily find everyone in all of those different spots, right? And so often you'll see a drone have to go all the way up there. But a KO knife is so much better because this straight away tells you, okay, it didn't hit anyone. No one's close. We're good, right? And that means that then what's going to happen is Optic are going to manage to, you know, get further up here and they're going to drone from much further up into the site, which means then that your drone can clear all of yellow and start to go actually towards site to start tagging people. Whereas a drone from back here can only just about reach yellow. Uh, so that's such a good thing. And it's just so much great information there. And as you see, this is exactly what is going to happen. Uh, you know, they get that. You can see they start to move forward with some confidence and the drone starts much further up and is able to, you know, start clearing all the way towards that. Now it gets killed there, but you get the idea. And now let's take a look at round number three, which is perhaps the best instance of seeing all of the different things that KO can do in a round. So it's 2-0 to Optic and it's the bonus round for them going against Sentinels and their better guns. Uh, so let's see what happens here. So you can see if we go to the map that they're starting to make this A hit over here. And uh, as we run this forward, uh, not what I wanted to do, as we run this forward, we're going to see that first off, we're going to get a KO knife. And I just want to show you what this knife gets. Look at all of this. This knife literally gets like all of sight. Every single bit of sight. There's one tiny gap here in this corner, I think. And then other than that, it pretty much you have to be like up on the stairs or like this side of screens. That is an insane amount of coverage. So basically it's going to tell you how many people are actually here. And uh, they get the two people who are there and now they can't use their utility as they come into the site. And then as we run this forward, what you're going to see is, uh, as you see there, Sick gets suppressed. But then as uh, Victor comes forward, he's going to get the flash, which pushes uh, Sick off of this angle. So they get even further into the site. And uh, now what's happened is before, is Sick has walled this. Uh, but they've started to destroy it. And what basically is going to happen here, Victor's going to cause such a problem. He's going to cause, you know, because he's flash sick off this, he's going to cause, as you can see, Tent is already looking there, and Sick is already looking there as well. And he's going to cause such distraction. Then he's about to nade this, which is going to freeze these two players from being able to enter the site as well. And we'll see that happen right now. So as we run this forward, there you go. He sends in that nade that cuts off the both the uh, Sova and the Viper from... Uh, coming in he gets one kill he gets traded but as you can see uh on the screen and on the map as well his teammates have been able to get into a much further position you can see that shazam and uh and zombs there are still being you know held back from the site because of that grenade and you can see how far pushed up uh the silver has managed to get because of the chaos that victor was able to create and the space he was able to garner from that and they end up getting two kills there and they're gonna end up winning this round now let's come to round five, and I'm sure that this is something that we've all seen before, right? A jet upper up on here, looking down this angle, very, very difficult to deal with uh, as an attacking team. You know, generally you're not going to have a gun that's going to be able to outduel someone who knows exactly where you're coming from. But of course, when you play KO, you have an answer to it because <laughs> he just pops a little flash out there, Tens gets blinded. Actually, something kind of weird here happens because uh, M FNS, I think it is here, sees him but only has a spectre so he kind of can't take that fight so he has to actually run back but obviously if he had like a vandal or something i'm sure he probably would have just taken tens his head off i'm pretty sure he probably wasn't expecting tens to just stay there uh but he did but then tens is going to get suppressed anyway because of the ko ult and now he has to run 
because now he doesn't have a dash to get out there. So if he does miss that shot, he is 100% dead. And again, just more power to the KO. And then let's come to the very next round. Now, as you can see, there's only 42 seconds left and it is a four on two. But as we see here, Dapper has his ult with Chamber and he's staring down this. And as they mentioned on the commentary, if Dapper gets one kill here and there's a slow on the floor and they can't trade it out, you know, then you're in trouble because the time's ticking down. That's going to be hard to get back. Dakba can maybe then get another kill. And then, you know, it's really round on. So this was, a you know, still a tense situation. And if Dapper found this first kill, you know, they were in some trouble. But what's going to happen, of course, is we're going to get something that maybe Dapper isn't used to on this map. And that is he's going to get flashed from, I guess, above. And uh, what obviously that means that he can't see. And that means that the uh, optic players start moving in. He has to all of a sudden make a crazy flick that he's not expecting as he's panicking. You know, should I run? Should I move? What should I do? He misses the shot and then Ye's able to get the kill. They get the sight, 4v1, they win the round. But perhaps the best reason to play KO on this map is that you will almost always run into a jet, a chamber, or a rainer. And one of the things that they love to do is get aggressive here on A, get up, push here on A, you know, get that kill, get out with their abilities, and then laugh at you for being in a 5v4. And KO just says no. And so we're going to get the ultimate example of this here because Tens is going to use his ult on Jet and try and get aggressive with it. And uh, he's going to end up having a pretty bad time. First off, he gets flash, which is a, that's a really cool flash that I guess considering where Victor is, because Victor's here, I'm guessing like he threw it against a wall perhaps or you know bounced off some wall i don't exactly know what he did but it, it was cool how it just came out of view and uh blinded tens straight away uh so tens gets blinded he then uh, is going to get slowed he's then going to get suppressed all of a sudden he has a classic out he also gets revealed by by uh the drone there as well and uh yeah this wasn't a good time for tens and he just stares into his death probably feeling like what did i do to deserve that so now let's come to, again, the very next round. It's round seven. It's 5-2 to Optic. And uh, at this moment in time, there's only 42 seconds left in the round. And you can see there's a Viper ult here. And they thought for a long time, are we actually going to press into this Viper ult? They eventually decided no. And what we're going to watch is Victor just sneak up on here. He finds the timing. And as the round goes on long, you might be able to find some timing as well uh, in these kind of situations. And you can see that it's starting to uh, walk back towards A. So let's see how this all pans out because we're going to see Victor do something that's pretty important here. Uh, so as you can see, he's just walking up. He finds the right timing. No one, uh, no one on top of boiler there. He's able to just, you know, keep on walking through and uh, he's able to spot the gun of tens and he's going to get himself a free kill. Now, as he gets that kill, he then decides I'm going to ult. And the idea behind this ult, well, Actually, his teammates were a bit surprised and they saw Tens back here. So perhaps they thought that there was someone else on A. So they initially start to come back here, but they are eventually going to start to go back towards A as the time is low. And uh, as there's a sort of a bit of a panic going on there, uh, what's going to happen is Victor's going to ult as we see. And uh, his goal now is to just stop these players. It just cause such a nuisance to stop any of these players rotating back towards A as their team decides to go A. Because the time at this point is that there's only 26 seconds left. So if just one player is, is in there, then that's going to cause a problem. But Sick tries to take that jewel, but Victor, again, and just another reason why, you know, having sort of the combat stim effect there of being able to shoot quicker is pretty good with a phantom in a situation like that with a moving target. And uh, he just is going to stay alive and suppress these other players and just... Yeah, just live in this moment. And you could see from the map that these other Sentinel players are like, we can't really go back to the site. I mean, they don't really have that much info on where exactly they are. But, you know, they're being trapped from the site because of just like this one man pressure uh, there who's also suppressing them. So they wouldn't have any abilities to, you know, try and stop any any plant or anything like that. And that gives his teammates the time to get in towards A. And uh, Victor just causes absolute chaos. And eventually his teammates find enough time. You can see he keeps flashing. He forces Zombs back again. And by the time they get there, only Shazam is up there. And uh, he's in a 1v3 at that point. They get the plant down. And Victor just continues, yeah, to live. He, he gets good information as well as they are. Because you can see the pings there. They have a pretty good idea where they are. Uh, and he also mollies the, the entrance there. So that they only can go through heaven. Unless they just want to wait even more. And uh, that's going to end with FNS just taking off both of their heads, as we see here. Uh, so really well played by Victor there, just sort of living in that moment, 
like causing such a nuisance that Sentinels kind of had to deal with him, allowed his team the time, even after FNS, you know, it was like, oh, let's go back B, and then, oh, no, let's go A. You know, even though they, they had time even to, you know, change their mind midway through and just about get the spike down. And now let's come to the defensive side. So as you can see, this is the pistol round. We've got our man Victor there in the mid, and you can see that Sentinels have a big group of players towards B, four of them, in fact. And uh, let's see what happens. And I think the map actually might be the better way of showing this. Uh, as we show the first couple seconds of the round, so the barriers go down. And uh, what we're going to get is obviously, you know, Sentinels starting to push. But then just as it happens, we get a KO knife in here that lands, I think, on the top of the building that suppresses all four of them in here. And that means, and as this was happening as well, as the suppression was happening, you could see here Shazam had just sent out the Owl Drone. Like, and, and so the Owl Drone goes straight away four of them detected think about the information that they just got they know that there's four people in here and they just stopped an aldrone now an aldrone on a pistol is insanely good because it is so difficult to break of course so having that information and stopping the aldrone i mean this viper is like loving what this ko did because now he's not going to get aldrone for one and also he knows okay well i need to probably be a bit more passive because there's four of them there so a massive help in this round and it's around the optic end up winning so now let's move a couple rounds ahead to round 15. This again is the bonus for Optic. And uh, as you can see here, we got more of a spread out look this time from Sentinels a couple seconds into the round here. But what's going to happen is on their bonus, you know, uh, the Viper here only has a Spectre. So they're going to want to get a bit aggressive. Now, uh, Yay on Chamber has an op. So what's going to happen here is, uh, well, let's, let's just take a look. Because we're going to get that same KO knife coming in from mid. And there it lands, as you can see. And that's going to force these Sentinel players back a bit. Now, they're still going to get caught by it. So the two players still get caught. So they know that there's two there. But because, obviously, when people are going to get KO knifed, you're expecting them to kind of run back away from it. You're expecting them to back away. What's going to what's gonna happen is that's going to allow the time. And you can see that this Viper didn't do this straight away. But that's going to allow the time because they know that Sentinels probably aren't going to randomly peek, particularly with the Viper wall up with no utility. So the Viper is going to be able to sneak up into this location. Now, Shazam eventually is going to drone here. But they have it set up so that Ye can kill the drone. And then this Viper is on a bonus, don't forget, where they have worse guns, is going to be able to get two free kills. And that is absolutely massive. And the spike went down. So they have a pretty good idea of what Sentinels wanted to do already. And uh, now they're in trouble. And this round, you know, plays out for a, quite a bit longer. Uh, but they do end up again winning this round. So overall, I was just super impressed by what they were able to do, Optic, with this KO. Whether it came to, you know, knifing people, getting aggressive, that was really good. They flashed operators, like, multiple times, and you are going to run into... Basically, you're guaranteed to run into a jet plus a chamber. And, you know, with things like if you get a Sage before she puts the wall down as well, that means that your opponent probably isn't going to plant for the next eight seconds. You know, all of these things with the knife are so good. The flashes, as I mentioned, flashing up is so good. And uh, even the nade, as we saw a couple times as well, just delaying and splitting people up. It's just all really, really, really good. And I think that uh, Optic and Victor here, you know, used KO to a very, very high level.